You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. This is the Options Industry Council's Wide World of Options. Before we start today's show, investors should know that options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. You should not enter into an options transaction until you have read and understood the risk disclosure document, characteristics and risks of standardized options. This brochure is available by visiting www.optionseducation.org or by calling 1-888-OPTIONS. OIC makes no recommendation with respect to any financial firm. OIC does not make any warranty as to the accuracy, usefulness, timeliness, or the continued availability or existence of information created or maintained by others. Multiple leg strategies involve multiple commission charges. Opinions and strategies expressed by others are not necessarily those of OIC, nor does OIC endorse, warrant, or guarantee products, services, or information described or offered by such firms. Commissions, fees, margins, interest, and taxes have not been included in any of the examples used in this show. These costs impact the outcome of all stock and options transactions. Consult your tax advisor about any potential consequences. None of the information presented in this show should be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell a security or to provide investment advice. Welcome to the Options Industry Council's Wide World of Options. OIC was created in 1992 to educate investors and their financial advisors about the benefits and risks of exchange-traded equity options. OIC offers a variety of resources to those interested in learning more about options, including live seminars, webcasts, and podcasts. Check out www.optionseducation.org for more information. Now here's your host, OIC's Director of Retail Education. Education, Joe Burgoyne. Welcome to OIC's Why World of Options. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Let's get started with industry happenings. It's time to get a handle on the latest developments from the world of options. It's time for industry happenings. Today on industry happenings, we're going to focus on a few OIC educational offerings. For you listeners who have not visited the OIC website, and even for those of you who have, and that's optionseducation.org, I would like to direct you to two specific areas on the site that may quickly advance your options knowledge. First, and I mentioned this on one of our previous shows, take a look at the My Path Assessment. You'll find this under the Options Education Program drop-down on the site. You'll need to log in or register, and from there, you'll be asked to complete a 20-question assessment. Based on the assessment results, we'll then download online lessons to you at either a basic, intermediate, or advanced level. So you're able to advance at a pace that suits you best. Now, another great item on the OIC site I want to be sure you listeners are aware of is the Position Simulator. You'll find that under the Tools and Resources bar. The simulator allows you to enter all kinds of positions, including multi-leg strategies. You can watch the positions evolve over time. Now, what's great about this tool is you can change some of the key inputs and see how the position changes. Are you making or losing money when certain changes occur. Underlying, up or down. Implied volatility, up or down. What happens as we get closer to expiration? You'll answer all these questions on the position simulator. So remember, my path and the position simulator. Two excellent offerings available at optionseducation.org. And finally, the OIC launched a mobile app a few months back for all your iOS devices. The app includes options courses and strategies. It also lists all seminars and special events and lots, lots more. Do check that out, the OIC mobile app. Thanks for joining us on today's Industry Happenings. It's time to break down the latest option strategies. It's time for Strategy Spotlight.
Joining us today on Strategy Spotlight is Bill Ryan, a member of OIC's Investor Services Group. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Joe. Glad to be here. Well, thanks for joining us. And um, before we get into today's topic, can you tell us a little bit about your journey uh, through the industry and how you landed up here at the OIC? Sure, Joe. About 30 years ago. 30? Yeah, about 30 years ago, I was a uh, margin clerk. Okay. And to learn how to properly margin our customers, I had to factor in the impact of option positions, and it taught me how options can increase or decrease a trader's market risk and thus their margin. It always fascinated me. Well, I, I know that you know, your enthusiasm for the options business, Bill, it, it's legendary, honestly, and you know, very infectious with all the folks you work with, I know. Absolutely. It, uh, you know, options are a tremendously versatile product. We can combine options with stock or options with options and uh, have all sorts of creative outcomes and possibilities. Well, I know you've uh, picked a, a particular strategy for us to talk about uh, on Strategy Spotlight today. So how about if we get right into this whole idea of covered call writing and which expiration do I choose? Tell us something about that. Well, first we want to de describe or define what a covered call is. Perfect. A covered call strategy involves a long or ownership of stock, a long position in stock, and then we sell a call option against that stock position. And is that uh, one call per 100 shares? Is that how it works? Your typical options contract represents 100 shares of stock. Okay. Yes, sir. So you buy a, you know, if you own 100 shares of stock, you can sell one call option against that uh, stock position. And, and so the motivation for the covered call position is what? Primarily to increase income. It also offers a bit of a cushion or protection on the downside of the stock. Well, that's uh, a nice segue into the risks around the covered call position. You know, tell our listeners about the risk component of a covered call. Well, covered call writing, the the primary risk is downside risk. Uh, and why we, is that? When we sell a call option, we receive premium. Okay. Uh, that's, you know, dollars or cents per share, dollars and cents per share. And the downside risk would be that the stock can decline by more than the amount of premium you receive. Okay. So that's, that's your risk in the position, that long stock position. Stock ownership is the, is the risk. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, um, there's not really risk to the upside, uh, but there, the covered call writer does forego any upside above the strike price of the options contract. Okay. So if I own stock at $50 a share and I sell a $55 call option, I gain the premium, I gain the uh, price appreciation from 50 to 55, but above $55, my profit is capped. It's capped because you've sold that call, and therefore, uh, if the stock's above 55 at expiration, you have that obligation to deliver the stock. My stock will get called away. Okay. Um, well, that's crystal clear. Now, how about... We've got so many different months, you know, with each of the underlyings. How do investors go about trying to pinpoint what month may be the best in their covered call position? Well, I think uh, a covered call writer has to do their homework. They need to be familiar with the company's corporate calendar. When do they pay their dividends? When do they announce their earnings? These factors can impact the price of call options from month to month. And is there any, I mean, that's, that's great advice. With When there are corporate actions, is it typical that the premiums will be a little higher because of maybe the uncertainty in the market? Well, certainly the, the more uncertainty uh, the, the would translate into higher option prices for both calls and put options. Okay, that makes sense. Now, um, we, we, we choose a month, and, uh, and I guess... We, we really didn't talk about this, but we now have the weekly products, too, in almost 300 underlyings. Right. So we, you, there's a wide variety of contracts, expirations available, and uh, there are several tools on the Options Industry Council website, optionseducation.org, that can assist the option strategist in selecting 
a month for their covered call writing contract. And and what's that tool, Bill, on the uh, OIC's website, optionseducation.org? What's that tool? We have a covered call calculator. Okay. We also offer a free line, uh, free online options classes, including one that's devoted specifically to covered call writing. But this this calculator is a, just a terrific tool. Tell me how that works. Uh, the calculator, once the uh, option trader, covered call writer, enters the stock ticker into the into the calculator, much of the information that's necessary to calculate returns and, and, and profit and loss scenarios is already loaded in to the calculator, including what expiration months are available, uh, what dividends, if any, will be paid during the life of the contract. So uh, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. Fantastic. And that's the covered call calculator. A covered call calculator available under our, our trading tools area. And will that also give you your break-even points and things like that? Oh, it, it, it's a wonderful tool. It, it uh, calculates break-even points. It calculates your return percentage if the stock gets called away or if the uh, your return percentage if the stock stays below the strike price of the call option. It, it calculates a return for the for the length of time that the contract that you have the position on, and then it also annualizes that number as well. It's just terrific. It also includes a graph with a pro, with a you know break even point profit loss uh, uh, graph uh, on the bottom of the of, of the calculator too. Well, that's great, and that's that's really uh, this is why we have this show. We get to speak to folks like you who bring you know ideas and and uh, things like the covered call calculator to our audience. So. I hope our listeners will use that, and um, especially, you know, many investors obviously have a handful of very favorite stocks, you know, that they, you know, trade or use options around, and to be able to just go to the website, plug in their, you know, favorite stocks, and then see the returns from the calculator just sounds like uh, it could really be beneficial. Just a, a wonderful tool. Now, uh, help me out. Um, we, we've talked about months. I think the other bugaboo, if you will, uh, really in, in option strategies is what strike? You have any uh, any thoughts on how investors should approach what strike do I sell in the covered call position? I think that uh, the strike price selection really depends on the the stockholders' opinion of the stock. Okay. If they are bullish, they might they might select an options contract a strike price that is. 10, 15 percent above the current level of the stock. If they're a bit more defensive or cautious, they may choose a strike price that is closer to the to the uh, option, the strike price that is closer to the value of the underlier. Okay, so it, it really gets back to that all important forecast on the underlying. Yes, sir, it does. You have to have an opinion. Yep. Okay. And um, tell me now, if you put on a covered call, do you have to hold that till expiration? Not necessarily. The, the trader's opinion can change. They might change their mind. Their forecast can change. Uh, if, if your forecast or opinion changes, you might want to consider changing your position. And, and by changing the position, you're, you're still going to, chances are, have that underlying, unless you just close it out. That's right. one yeah. option. Or are you talking about potentially rolling to a different strike or month? Is that that's, a, that's a very common technique uh, if, in a covered call writing uh, campaign. Whereas the expiration of the contract that you've sold approaches, as that expiration date approaches, a very common technique is to buy back the expiring contract and then sell another or further out contract. That's referred to as rolling out in okay. time. You can also roll out and up and strike. You can roll out and down and strike. Okay. And um, maybe you just answered this in a way. If, if an opinion changes and a position goes bad, one choice then is to just roll, or is the other choice really just to close the position and move on? Yep. Sometimes it's best to bite the bullet. In a covered call p position, I've often heard that term to say they unwind the position. They buy back the call and sell the stock. Okay. Very good. Well, this uh, before we wrap it up, any other key components or tools or any, any other thoughts you'd like to offer to our listeners? Well, I think it's important that you do your homework and be familiar with the company's corporate calendar. It, you know, dividends uh, will certainly factor into 
your covered call strategy. And, and with with uh, speaking of dividends in the covered call strategy, you do collect the dividend, correct? As long as you hold the stock, yes, okay. sir. All right, very but good. A feature of an op of a of an option on an individual stock is that it can be exercised on any business day, and it's very common, right before the ex dividend date, for in the money call options to be exercised. Mm -hmm. And in that case, obviously, your long stock would be called away, so you would not collect the dividend. Right. Correct. Okay. Well, before we wrap up, Bill, any final words of wisdom? You got a funny story from your, uh, you know, quite a few years in the industry. Anything you'd like to uh, entertain our listeners with? Well, you know, there's not too many funny stories about cover call writing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do think that it's, it's a strategy that uh, sort of has a bad rap. And why is that? It, it, it's not wholly exciting. True. However... If you use the, the if you have the information available and you use our covered call writing calculator, you will see profit potential. You can increase your earnings, reduce your risk, and uh, and have fun while you're at it. Oh, having fun is always uh, important. A lot of people, uh, some people think of uh, investment. Uh, opportunities as having fun. Others don't, but I think that's, uh, that's a great way to finish. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Bill, and offering your wisdom. Uh, you and the team over there at Investor Services do a great job. And um, again, thanks for joining us today on Strategy Spotlight. It was great to be here, Joe. Thank you. It's time to meet the movers and shakers from the world of options. It's time for Profiles and Perspectives. Well, joining us today on Profiles and Perspectives is Gary Franklin. He's manager of option trading and strategies at Raymond James. Gary, thanks very much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Gary, why don't you tell us um, a little bit about your journey through this options industry? Okay. Yeah, you know, for me, I've been in the industry going on uh, 23 years, and I've, I've had many different roles um, in the back office, uh, starting out as a dividend clerk, moving over to uh, security lending, uh, internal audit. And along the way, you know, for me, I started trading options in the early 90s on my own. And um, over time, you know, took it up, wanted to learn different strategies, see how the whole process worked, which uh, led me to uh, join the um, then Morgan Keegan Options Trading Desk and uh, became the manager within a couple of years and uh, really just grew as the industry grew. And indeed, it has grown quite a bit. Now, you know, you're you're with Raymond James, but uh, Morgan Keegan, where where were they based? Um, Morgan Keegan was a um, southern firm based out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, okay. Very similar culture to uh, Raymond James. Uh, Raymond James based out of um, St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and um, about a year ago, the two firms uh, merged up. So we're now the uh, you know the largest uh, southern firm in the United States, and, and Raymond James is also global as well. That's fantastic, and and you're heading up um, you know the options trading and strategy segment for Raymond James. Correct, correct. Uh, my main focus is uh, marketing and education um, internally to our financial advisors, and giving them the uh, the ability to you know number one understand the the uh, basic concepts of options and taking them to the next level to uh, provide our um, clients with a, a level of service and understanding of options to, uh, to uh, meet the current demand. Well, besides, um, you know, your options education at uh, Raymond James, do you know anybody else who does options education? Um, you know, actually, the, uh, the, the, um, everybody is really waking up to options, and, and I, um, you know, leverage the Option Industry Council. Thank you very much. Site. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's um, it's a great, you know, great site. Um, you know, optionseducation.org. Uh, um, we send people, we send folks there as well, um, advisors, and we tell our um, tell the advisors that um, you know, send your clients there. You know, check out the site, check out different strategies, try, you know, watch the videos, the podcasts, and um, it's really been a great tool for us to um, you know, to help promote our products and promote the option industry as well. So, and as you yeah. mentioned, the, you know, the growth in the industry has been uh, really pretty dramatic over the last 10 years. Raymond James has, has a very rich history. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? 
Um, yes, definitely. Um, Robert James started the firm back in 1962. And, um, you know, from, from there, with the idea that, that the firm was not necessarily going to be a Wall Street firm. You know, we wanted to be a, an independent firm with a culture where the client always was going to come first. You know, and, and if the client was happy, then, then you know, the referrals would come and, you know, the firm would grow from there. And, and it, it's unbelievable, the growth of the firm. We have over... Um, I believe over 6,500 advisors now. Um, wow. We offer, offer two channels, you know, the full service firm, um, and then we also have the independent side where you can actually have your own, um, you know, shingle on the door, but um, Raymond James um, provides the full boat of uh, services for you. And then, so it, and it kind of feeds into our culture of, you know, we are a large firm with a small, small firm feel. So we give the advisors the independence to do what's right for their clients. Well, um, it's interesting because uh, one of the questions I was going to ask you was, you know, what do you think sets Raymond James apart from others in the industry? And it sounds like uh, you kind of just answered that. Definitely, definitely. To give, you know, world-class uh, service, world-class technology, but at the same time, you know, knowing that our clients can call our advisors and, and they'll be there to answer questions. And the same goes for me. If a client wants to learn about options and the advisor wants to bring me on the line, you know, I'm more than willing to uh, to uh, field conference calls with the advisor and the client on the line and just go through strategies, whether it's, you know, simple call writing or advanced, um, you know, um, advanced strategies. And whatever it is, whatever the client needs, you know, that's what we're our kind of our MO is, you know, whatever you need, that's what we're going to provide. So uh, it sounds like you may not need sleep. I mean, you got 6,500 advisors out there, and you're the guy they call for options. Boy, oh, boy, how do you, how do you manage all that? <laughs> yeah, thanks to the iPhone, I'm connected 24-7. I'm so, sorry to uh, hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, and with us, our focus is obviously as well, the firm is, is a, um, more of a conservative firm. So, you know, okay. our, our uh, strategies also um, go along those same lines as well. Um, you know, you mentioned that you are a worldwide firm and you've got, you know, 6,500 advisors. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the geography, if you would, of Raymond James and, and how it lays out. Okay. Um, you know, and once again, I am, you know, sort of new to the firm coming over from the, um, from the Morgan Keegan side after the merger. But um, most of the um, United States is covered. Uh, we're in Canada, we're in, in Europe, and um, a couple of um, countries in uh, South America. But our main focus is obviously, you know, domestic in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with with our origin, our roots um, stemming from the southeast and and growing out from there. Well, um, I, I think our listeners might be interested to hear. I mean, you're you're the guy on the front lines getting calls from the financial advisors. You know, industry research, and I know uh, here at the OIC we've done some industry research about uh, how financial advisors use options or don't use options. Um, I think the latest uh, Bellamy study, you know, suggests that about 48 percent of advisors use options. Um, do you find that to be the case in Raymond James? Do you think it's a smaller percentage than that? And are there favorite strategies that you get calls on, you know, from the advisors? Okay. Yeah, you know, I would say um, Raymond James is is um, definitely has a wider use of options than many may think, even, even internally. Um, you know, options, if in the last couple of years, as technology has um, come along to disseminate quotes and give us the tools to um, push out to the client and, and the, even the client can do their own research, um, it's, it's uh, really leveled the playing field for the retail um, client and the retail advisor. Um, so if, if, the, if, if the client is looking for it, the advis advisor needs to know about it. So internally, you know, um, Raymond James feels like, you know what, this is a product line that, that's important, especially in a low interest rate environment. The um, leads into what's the most, you know, widely used strategy is just um, plain Jane cover call writing. You own you own a stock. You've got a portfolio of equities in there. Whether they pay a dividend or not, if they pay a dividend, you know, you, you can uh, sell a call on top of it and enhance that div a dividend. So if you're collecting three percent yield on on your stock, 
and you want to start selling calls, you can, you know, easily add, you know, one to three percent doing a one to two rounds a year, maybe three rounds a year of cover call writing. And, um, you know, you can really build uh, value there. And, and especially in a low interest rate environment, you know, cover call writing has been has been a you know a real winner for everybody and and our advisors have woken up to that fact and understand that you know if you if you offer it these it, everybody's ready to go with it and they and and believe it or not as a, as a study has shown um the clients understand it you know they're they're ready to go their comfort level is increasing and the um the playing field is, has been leveled so we're we're actually um really starting to um enhance the uh, the education which is part of my role is to educate the brokers to educate the clients makes a lot of sense and as you said in this low interest rate environment to be able to uh, garner additional yield uh, from your underlying stocks uh, just is something that a lot of investors really seem to be keen on you know changing it up a little bit you know from an industry perspective do you see uh, obstacles for the options industry going forward or do you see you know smooth sailing you know for me we have i see see it as the glass half full definitely there's there's obstacles out there you know you know getting you know groups that are you know maybe resistant to change getting them to understand options and so you know taking the mystery out of them and saying you know you know what if you keep it simple it is a is a great product to reduce risk. Not you know I'm not a, a fan of of speculating, but I'm a fan of reducing risk, hedging portfolios, generating income, and and as long as other peers in the industry um, keep that same cap- same stance, uh, you know I think the industry really has a uh, you know another leg up of growth that's that's probably coming. I mean you look at the number of exchanges that are out there, and then the, um, there's uh, you know a couple of more that are on the horizon. That only enhances the uh, competitive nature of um, the pricing of options, the bid offer, and that that um, you know gives our client a better experience. You know, if, if the spread is, is is narrow between the bid and the offer, so you can buy it here or sell it there, and, and there's a, a very tight market, then the client's going to have a better experience, and and the industry is is um, the foundation of the industry and the number of exchanges competing for business has really, really helped me um, promote the the product to the retail client. Well, um, your comment about you know keeping it simple, I think, really uh, really makes an awful lot of sense. Uh, oftentimes, the investor is intimidated by this whole idea of options, but uh, they really don't have to be a complicated financial tool. And uh, I couldn't agree with you more about, you know, keeping it simple, you know, uh, generating income and enhancing, uh, you know, management and and managing risk of an overall portfolio uh, seem to be the two primary reasons why investors, you know, continue to, you know, play in the options market. Exactly. And, you know, um, just to kind of add on to that, you know, we once again, you know, use the OIC's uh, website, you know, we'll send clients there, look, if you if you want to learn how to do a, a bear call spread, go to the site, you know, pull up bear, bear call spreads, see how it works, see, you know, get get the fundamentals down, and then, you know, come back to us or call the, the OIC's, um, you know, hotline, ask questions of them, or, if, you know, we uh, also leverage if um, if there's a seminar in their city provided by the OIC, you know, we try to make sure that if it's, if it's we have advisors in that area that we try to, you know, let them know that the, those events are happening. So uh, I think it's a, you know, it's a great tool for us to uh, help promote the business. Well, um, you know, we uh, we take a lot of pride, obviously, in the level of education that we offer investors, and we certainly appreciate you getting the word out because, uh, in the end, everybody benefits. As as we wrap up, Gar, any uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you got a little uh, maybe an entertaining story for our listeners? Yeah, sure. You know, it's it's funny how the the um, as technology has changed, the whole industry has changed. You know, when I first started trading options, if, you know, the uh, you you would see a quote on the screen, and the the spread would be, you know, very wide, or you know, even if it was a competitive one, it would still have some room in there and the size wasn't there you really weren't sure exactly how much was out there so you you know you would call your advisor the advisor would call the trade desk 
you know, and then the trade desk would call the exchange floor. Then they would call the, you know, send the runner out. Then the runner would go out to the uh, market maker. Then he would come back and tell you, tell the, um, the floor broker, you know, if, if you were done or not. And then if you needed to change the price, you would have to go send the guy back out. And so, you know, an order used to be acceptable for, uh, you know, basically three to five minute process. And now with, with, um, you know, desktop trading, you know, you put the order in and, and, and boom, you're done. You have instant, you know, notice of, of, of whether you're shown or executed. And, um, it's just amazing, you know, now, now two seconds is a long time, whereas five minutes was totally acceptable and considered quick. So from, from yeah. over the years, it's amazing how that's happened, how, how the industry has changed. And it's just totally revolutionized the way we do, um, do our business. And Indeed it has. Exactly. Well, um, Gar, I think uh, it's it's really a pleasure to have you uh, join us on Profiles and Perspectives here at OIC's Wire World of Options. Uh, we wish you the best at Raymond James, and thanks very much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. It's time to upgrade your options toolbox with cutting-edge trading platforms, devices, and information. It's time for tools, resources, and good reads. Glad you are with us today for tools, resources, and good reads. Our tool today is Fibonacci retracements. Fibonacci what, you might say? This type of market analysis is one I used for years on the trading floor and one I still use every time I look at a chart. Most of us have heard of the 50% principle. For those who haven't, the idea is oftentimes stocks on corrections will pull back or correct 50% of the prior move. This goes for both bullish and bearish moves of an underlying. Well, 50% is one of the key Fibonacci ratios. The other two that are most frequently used are the 0.382 and the 0.618 retracements. Let's look at an example. Take a $20 stock that runs to $24 then begins a correction back down. I use the Fibonacci ratios to create a target zone for the pullback. So 382 times the $4 move equals just a little over one and a half, 1.52, minus the high at $24 gives us 22.50. The 50% retracement, you know, is... Uh, 0.5 times that $4 move or $2. So the 50% pullback from 24 is 22. And the 618 pullback gives us a, two and a, a 21 and a half point target to the downside. So what's important to me here is I've defined my pullback zone between 22 and a half and 21 and a half. I think you'll find this tool works better for some stocks than others. There's plenty more on Fibonacci ratios that we can cover in another show, but this is a great place to start. Now, the resource I want to mention today is really more of a to-do. I urge you to take time to create a customized portfolio page of your favorite stocks, indexes, ETFs, and any other investments. There are countless sites on the web that offer this capacity. Your brokerage firm probably offers this capacity as well. And finally, a couple good reads I'd like to pass along. For those of you interested in weekly options, check out Russell Rhodes' book, Trading Weekly Options. Russell's an instructor at CBO's Options Institute. He's also an OIC instructor, so some of you may have met him at one of our live OIC events. And lastly, I just want to pass on Peter Lynch's Common Sense Classic, One Up on Wall Street, How to Use What You Already Know to Make Money in the Market. We covered a lot today. Thanks for joining us on Tools, Resources, and Good Reads. 
You've been listening to the Options Industry Council's Wide World of Options. If you have questions about anything you heard on today's show, email Joe Burgoyne at options at the OCC.com. Or you can call OIC's Investor Services at 1-888-OPTIONS. Interested in connecting with OIC on social media? Like the OIC page on Facebook. Follow them on Twitter at options underscore edu. Or join their group on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening. And be sure to check out our next episode of the Wide World of Options. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.